either. In this lesson, we will see some specific objects, like for example the railings, but also some structural objects like beams and columns. But let's start from the ramp object. This object also has a dedicated editor that opens once the object is fixed in into place. Here we can insert a ramp, a curved ramp and a landing if necessary. As for the stage object, with a first click we insert the object in the workspace and with a second click we will fix the position. From the right panel I can define its characteristics, the width for example by choosing 5 meters and 10 meters for the length. Let's now insert in continuation a landing object. By using the edit function, we can modify the shape of the landing just by using the grip of the segment. And we can add this curved ramp. And while still attached to the mouse cursor, with the F7 and F8 keys, we can rotate the object. And with the F5 and F6 keys, we can also move its anchor point. Of course, now we need to adapt the width. So let's write 5 meters as well. And then let's see the result in the 3D view. From here, we have more function available. For example, from the geometrical box, we can edit the basic connection. That can be horizontal or vertical, but we can also edit the ramp landing connection from here. We can change the ramp line in thickness from 5 cm to 10. And we can also add an offset of the same value. Of course we can do the same for the landing slab and the ramp slab. Same procedures as for the stairs. We can use the green arrow for the properties panel in order to change the elevation of this object. But now let's move on and talk about railing. This object is modeled by positioning vertex nodes. So we just click on the workspace all the time we need and then click on the confirm button. Now let's select it from the 3D view and check its properties from the right panel. From the geometry box we can access the beam object library and eventually choose among different models as for example this one. From here I can choose an initial offset for example 200 mm to define a final offset of the same value. I can also move the railing object laterally of another 20 cm. Here we have some information about the segment and we can also decide to make the segment invisible. This can be useful if we want to make an opening into our railing. And of course we have all the other boxes available for the previous object. Now let's examine the column object. We just need one click in order to insert this object in the workspace and a second click to fix the position. From the section button we can access the beam object library and choose among the different sections available. From here we can change the alignment of the anchor point. Then from the geometry box we can change the height of the column and by clicking this button we can also choose to bring up all the connected elements. From here it's possible to define a rotation angle, for example 30 degree, and we can also change the coordinate of the lower node. And then all the other usual boxes. Now we can insert a beam just above this column, so what we need is just a first click to the start point, choose the direction and eventually the alignment, and then a second click to the end point. The beam properties are almost the same of the column. We can rotate of a certain angle using a node as vertex. We can move the entire object vertically, for example bring it down of 1 meter. And then we have the elevation reference system. Now let's have a look at the steel column and beam. We can insert a column directly from the 3D view. And then from the beam object library we can choose the section we prefer. The properties panel is exactly the same of the normal column. So let's insert a steel beam. Again we just need a couple of clicks. And here is how it looks from the 3D view. So let's select the beam and as we can see we can change the alignment but also the rotation and eventually the shapes of the section. All the remaining functions are the same as seen before. Now we want to insert a customized beam which has a totally different modeling process. Indeed, in this case, we have to click 
the start point and the ending point, and then we will have access to a dedicated editor. Here on the left we can see a vertical section of our beam which has an editable perimeter. So for example we can have this bottom segment 3 meter and a half long. Then we can add some nodes in the segment. And of course we can move this vertex. And we can also convert this segment into an arc. And so we can achieve this result. Then speaking about custom object we can also choose a curved beam. So insert a start and end point. And then we need to open the 3D view in order to set the curvature. Again from the property toolbox we can choose the alignment, we can also choose the cut typologies, for example if you want a vertical or an horizontal cutting styles like in this case. Then we can change the rotation of the beam, for example 90 degrees, so we can have the curvature in the horizontal plane. Now let's check this other object, which is a set of beams considered as a unique block. Like any other horizontal envelopes, we need to draw the perimeter by inserting vertex. Now from the preview, view, we can see this beam grid work, which has some particular properties that we can check on the right panel. As for the other beams, we can select a particular section from the beam object library. And we can also change from a normal beam to a steel beam. So let's choose this for example. Again we can choose a different alignment. And we can also define the spacing characteristics. We can choose to have a fixed spacing, for example in this case of 1 meter. We can decide the general alignment of the beams, but we can start from the left or from the right side, but also from the center. And we can also assign an offset to the starting beams, in this case for example 20 cm. If we want to change the spacing typology, we can choose to have a certain fixed number of beams, for example I need a distribution of 7 beams. And also here I can decide if starting from the left, from the center or from the right side, and eventually also an offset. Another spacing typology is this one here, in which we can define a minimum spacing value. For example, we can have a beam every 50 centimeters. From this box we can have different rotation typology, and from the geometry box we can choose to have an horizontal or a vertical beam. And the pitching method of the entire object. So we can have an horizontal plan, but also a slope line, and a pitching in three point. And in this last case, we have to modify the position of the point 1, point 2 and the point 3. And then from the 3D view we can assign an elevation. But let's come back to a simple slope line. Now the beams are aligned with the slope line. But here with this option we can align the section of the beams to a vertical axis. In further lessons we will talk again about beam grid work with this function that allows us to make a grid work directly under the roof object. Now let's see how the truss object works. So we need to insert some columns as spaces and as seen before we just have to click on the workspace. And if I want to insert the second column at a certain distance I just need to click the starting point, hold down the A hey key from the keyboard, then insert the correct distance value and click enter. Now let's start off with the steel truss. The first click will anchor the object to the mouse cursor, the second click will fix the start point and then a third click to define the direction. The truss object is defined by a magnetic grid, so in order to make any modification we need to click on the nodes of the grid. So for example we can change the dimension by choosing modify length from the center or from the opposite side, like in this case. We can do the same from the vertical dimension by gripping the orange arrow, but also by defining a specific value. Now from the property panels, we can change the section of all the parts of the truth. But we can also change the general shape of our object, for example we can choose this one, or maybe this other one. We can have a non-symmetric or an half truth as well. We can totally customize the geometric properties of our truth. And then of course we have the other properties box that we already know. But now let's have a look at the wooden truss. Again we need the first click to insert the object in the workspace, a second click to fix the start point, and the third click to fix the direction. Then of course we need to rearrange the length of the object. And as we can see in the right panel, we have almost the same properties of the steel truss.